A new book out by Man Booker Prize winning author Howard Jacobson takes a comic fairy tale approach to Donald Trump, satirizing the American president as a rude, ignorant, entitled prince named Fracacas. The title of the book is something I can't say on air, but your president did once brag on tape that if you're famous, he thinks you can grab it without a woman's consent. And joining me now is Howard Jacobson, author of this new book, which I shall not say the name of on television. There it is. We blurred it out. Uh, okay, Howard, talk a little bit about this book. You essentially made a satire of a snotty little prince uh, who, I guess, becomes the ruler of the world. Explain. Yes, I don't suppose it's anybody you immediately recognize. Isn't it wonderful that we, you, you can't have the title and yet your president could say it? I think that's a fantastic thing. Irony. Um, fantastically funny. Yes. Um, there was the, the, it was the moment when the laughter stopped. I mean, for months, when, when certainly from, from where I was in, in safe old London, watching, watching, watching Trump's rise and not believing anything would come of it, it just seemed amusing. And then the laughter suddenly stopped. He was there. He was going to be president. And uh, you felt, I felt anyway, one had to do something about this. One had to keep one's sense of humor, otherwise you're in trouble if, you've, if you forget to laugh. But there was a new horror about, my God, could this really be? And how could one find a form to express the shock that one felt, the sense of absurdity, the sense of dread, and the disbelief, really? So only a fairy tale could, could do it. You know how fairy tales will give you the improbable with the innocent, with the sinister. And this was all of these things. It was impossible. It was improbable. It couldn't possibly have happened. It was absurd, but it was very, very frightening. Yeah. So I chose the fairy tale mode, which makes all that possible, and simply deal with this this little guy called Fracassus, who is a kind of a baby Trump. It never seemed to be necessary that, the, that this baby ever grows up <laughs> to achieve power, because the particular person I'm parroting never grew up anyway. There you go. And I'm going to read a little bit it's of excerpt from it. And, and, and there's a there's a part in this uh, fictional place called Herbs Lettuce. Uh, and on his deathbed, the former ruler tells the Trump-like character, who's Prince Fracasas, the secret to leadership. And he says that the, le the secret is you should never keep a single promise that you make. And he says, you ask, uh, you ask me, are the people stupid? Very far from it. They can smell a fraud a thousand miles away. But ask me if they know what's best for them, then the answer is a resounding no, because their besettling weakness is that they love a fraudster. Do you think people sort of secretly love almost to be uh, tricked by a fraudster? Well, how else do you explain it? I mean, here's the question. One can't assume, we have, we have similar problems back in England, believe me, but you can't assume that the people are completely out of their brain, or you can't stop. You can't, you, can't, you can't leave that with your explanation. So you have to assume somewhere that there is some smartness in voters, and in, in which case, why would they vote for who they're voting for? They must actually either want to do themselves some harm, and I'm interested in that thought, is self-destruction in the air here in both our countries, or it might might be that they like conspiring somewhere or other as an act of spite against everybody else. They like conspiring with somebody who's somehow or other just not right, yeah. who, who, if he doesn't tell lies, talks nonsense, who uses very small words, who appeals to, to the most stupid part of themselves. So I was interested in this, in examining all that. What is it? What is it in our culture that makes us vote for who we're voting for? Why are we doing it? I don't want to blame anybody. I want to ask the question about how are we all responsible for this grotesquerie that you're landed with and that, you know, before long we'll all, we're all going to be landed with. Yeah. And as you are a gentleman from uh, the United Kingdom, I have to ask you your response to, we've seen now um, threats against uh, theaters in the United States uh, that have just Shakespeare in the name. We've seen sponsors pulling out of a production of Julius Caesar and Shakespeare in the Park, uh, Delta and Bank of America. And some of these are sponsors who sponsored the very same kind of show, but when Barack Obama was the one who was being depicted as Julius Caesar. What, what do you make of all of that? Oh, I tell you, if it, were, if it wasn't that I'd ruin my microphone, I'd, pull, I'd tear my hair out. But doesn't it, it's wonderfully interesting, because doesn't it just show that that crowd, that Trump and those who support him, actually don't know what a play is? They think a play makes a statement. They think a play is a recommendation. If somebody dies in a play, they think that is telling people, go out and kill people. The subtlety of a drama, the subtlety of the language of drama is completely lost on them. But there's another irony. I seem to remember, I seem to remember in the, in, in the run-up, 
Trump as good as sort of implying yeah. maybe maybe Hillary might herself get assassinated. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if there is if there is violence in the air at the moment, yeah. you know, uh, Trump has to ask himself, where's this violence come Coming from? from? Isn't it a violence that he himself has launched yeah. into in, in, into into the culture? Yeah. But the main thing for but, me, yeah. I am a writer. The subtlety of writing is what we care about. How can they not know what a play is? Yeah, that it's it, it's fictional. Uh, as is a terrific new book uh, by Howard Jacobson. Uh, the title, you can imagine what it is. Trump said you could grab it. Um, and it is a terrific book, and we uh, wish you very great luck with it. Thank you, Howard Jacobson. Thank you very much indeed. Thank Pleasure you. Pleasure talking to you. Cheers.